One of the most inexpensive accessories that you can add to your kit if you're a nature photographer is a simple circular polarizer filter. This is one of the few filters that I recommend because its effects can't be duplicated in Lightroom or Photoshop after the photograph has been created. To gain the advantage of what a polarizer can do, you must use it while you're creating your images. I'll show you the basics of how to use a polarizer filter, how to buy one, and some advanced polarized techniques that you may not have ever considered. All that, coming up. Terry Van Ryden here, and today it's all about the polarizer filter. First off, what is a polarizer filter? Simply put, this filter, when used properly, reduces or eliminates reflections. Just like your polarized sunglasses, the glare is reduced. Fishermen for years have known about the virtues of using polarized lenses in their sunglasses. It allows them to see past the reflections and into the water. Quite an advantage for seeing where the fish are under the surface of the water. As photographers, we use the polarizer filter to reduce or eliminate entirely the reflections on water and other subjects. So how does this filter work? The polarized lens was invented in 1936 by Edwin Land. Yep, that's the same guy who invented the Polaroid Land camera. He invented it mostly to use in everyday sunglasses. There is typically a coating on the glass that it's made up of a chemical film that molecules naturally align with one another. By applying it to the glass in one direction, the molecules filter out any light that's not aligned to those molecules. Most people are familiar with polarized lenses that we use in our sunglasses. Essentially, they're built to reduce glare that is reflected from surfaces. Most of the light that we see appears as glare is reflected on a horizontal plane. Some examples of this would be like light bouncing off of the hood of your car or asphalt or even across the lake. When making sunglasses, manufacturers align that film so that the coating will be vertical. The polarized lenses in our sunglasses only allow vertical light to pass through and thereby cutting the horizontal light and not allowing it to pass through the lens. Since the reflected light we view as glare is horizontal, the filter reduces that glare that's reaching our eyes. In photography, the polarizer filter does just that, reduces glare. When purchasing a polarizing filter, what are you gonna look for? There are still some old technology filters out there called linear polarizers, but you're not gonna want that. You're gonna want a circular polarizer filter. Most circular polarizer filters come with two pieces of glass with the polarizing film sandwiched between the pieces of glass. This allows the photographer to thread on the filter onto the front of their lens securely, and then since it's in two pieces, it allows us to rotate the front piece of the glass filter to achieve the level of polarization that we're looking for. This also enables the photographer to have the ability to control the amount of polarizing effect by slowly rotating the front ring of the filter. Now, having two rings sandwiched together also makes the polarizing filter twice as thick as a regular conventional filter. When attached to some lenses, usually wide angle lenses, that extra thickness can cause vignetting around the edges of your images. To eliminate this problem, you can buy an extra thin filter or do what I did and invest in magnetic filters. I bought into the Case Wolverine magnetic filters. I found them on YouTube on Hudson Henry's site and I really like them. Hudson has a fantastic site, no nonsense YouTube channel, has lots of great information, and he's created a set of filters made from Case. And that's where I got my polarizer filter from. I'll leave a link below just in case you wanna get a set for yourself. The Case filters are very thin, and since they're attached with a magnetic ring, you can rotate the filter using the magnets to hold them. 
rather than having to use that sandwich filter I talked about earlier. I use these filters on my 14 to 24 Z lens attached to my Z9 and the fit's fantastic. Another advantage of using the magnets is this filter system, you can avoid having to thread on the filter each time you want to use it. When standing in the middle of a river and attempting to thread on a 112 millimeter filter, it can be kind of unsettling knowing that you might drop that filter into the water. With this system, you thread on the magnetic ring at home and just leave it on the lens. Attaching the filters anytime you want is a breeze by just clicking them into place. The key thing to remember is that it's another piece of glass attached to the lens. You need to keep it clean without fingerprints, scratches, or any other smears. Also to me, it doesn't make sense to pay a couple thousand dollars for a super sharp lens and then thread on a cheap filter made from poor quality glass. So buy the best filter that you can afford. Maybe get a large one that's made for wide angle lenses and then get a step down ring so that you can put it on all your other lenses. That's probably a cheaper way to go. You don't need to buy super expensive filter that also has warming in the image or any other color effect that, that they try to sell you, unless you're shooting film because you can easily correct and control color afterwards in the computer. So to me, it's not worth the extra money of those really super expensive filters. So why are we gonna rotate a polarizer filter? The reason you wanna rotate a polarizer filter is because it, light can be bounced from many different directions. And it's not always coming at you on the horizontal plane, like when we're wearing our sunglasses in the car. The ability to rotate the filter will give you the opportunity to cut glare the way you want to cut it and how you want to enhance your photographs. The idea behind cutting the glare is that using this filter will deliver richer colors and more details than without it. That's because the filter cuts glare, which would yield on our sensors as just as a plain color, such as white. The glare is removed, revealing the detail that's underneath the glare. All the vibrancy and color is underneath the glare that is now visible. The glare was blocking out the vibrancy and the tones that were in our photographs. So it's pretty cool results for a simple filter. After all, most of us want images with more detail and saturated colors. While a polarizer filter will reveal more detail, it won't make your images sharper. But my book, Razor Sharp Nature Photography, can help you make razor sharp images. You can find it and other products over at my website, imagelight.com. Go to the digital products page and check it out. This instantly downloadable ebook is designed for you to put it right on your iPad and, or your phone and take it with you when you're out shooting. It's packed with many, many ways to improve your photography and get those razor sharp images. I do appreciate how many of the photographers have already purchased my razor sharp book. Already it's been sold all over the world in all seven continents, which is really pretty amazing to me. This and other purchases you make from my website help me to make these videos, so I really appreciate it. Next, we have to determine what we use the polarizer filter for. At first glance, the answer is reducing glare, but the process of reducing glare can enhance colors. Check out these leaves, with and without a polarizer filter being used. Here it is without the polarizer filter, and here it is with the polarizer filter engaged. Since you're here on my channel to learn more about nature photography, one thing nature has no shortage of is plants. Plants, for their protection against water loss, have a thin coating of cells on the surface of the leaf. This coating prevents water loss from the plant and also protects it from getting too much water in rainforest situations. It's also the reason water beads up on the leaf surfaces. The layer is called a cuticle. It's kind of a waxy, often shiny appearance that can present a real problem when it comes to glare. It's this glare that makes the polarizer filter essential for shooting plants and landscapes. If your subject has trees, grasses, moss, or any other plant material, try using a polarizer the next time you're out, photographing to see how you like the results. When you're using a polarizer filter, the direction of the sunlight is an important factor to consider. 
For the general rule to go by, the polarizer filter is best used in daylight, mostly between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. This is when the sun is at its highest angle to us, and it causes the most reflections in our photographs. You'll notice a more dramatic difference when the light is coming from either the left or the right side of the photographer, as opposed to, say, directly behind the photographer. A polarizer filter won't work all the time, since you may not be getting a reflected glare that you can neutralize, but most of the time you'll see some fantastic results. But what about an overcast day or maybe earlier or later in the day? The best way is just to try it every time you set up a landscape shot, put on the polarizer filter and see if the difference is made in your images. Here's a shot early in the day without the polarizer filter and here's one with the polarizer filter. A very popular use of the polarizer filter is to make the sky a deeper blue. This use of a polarizer filter to deepen the color of the sky is not something I recommend. That's because you're likely going to deepen part of the sky, but not all of it. Back when we were shooting film, we didn't have the choice to go to software and fix everything. Now with our digital software, we can go back and replace or blew up a sky all we want a lot easier in the computer. If you're enjoying this content, be sure to hit the like button and then hit subscribe and then click the notify bell to be notified of my next video. I also have content over at my podcast, the Nature Photography Podcast. It can be found on all the popular podcast sites. Just search for the Nature Photography Podcast. Be sure to include the word the and look for the bald eagle logo. The next thing to consider is, can you use a polarizer filter while shooting wildlife images? The answer is sometimes. One of the big drawbacks to using a polarizer filter is the loss of light. Just like our sunglasses, the amount of light reaching our eyes is reduced. That means that the light reaching our sensors of the camera is reduced, sometimes up to two full stops. As an example, photographing something at a shutter speed of say a thousandth of a second, with a polarizer filter dialed into its darkest state means you'll be shooting that image at one 250th of a second. Likely not a fair trade-off when you're trying to capture wildlife. Now there might be a scenario where a polarizer filter might be beneficial to a wildlife image, and that is if the animal is reflective, such as amphibians. If you're using available light to capture frogs that aren't moving around too much, the polarizer filter might be just what you need to reduce the reflections on the skin of these animals. However, don't be tempted to use a polarizer filter with on-camera flash. You'll just end up darkening the image. You generally do not want to use a polarizer filter when you're using on-camera flash. That's because the flash is coming directly from the camera towards the subject and not at an angle of light that would cause glare or reflections that a polarizer filter could help you with. However, if you're using a camera flashes that are off angle, then a polarizer filter might work for you. Keep in mind that you're losing two stops of light when you dial a polarizer filter all the way in. So you have to weigh those advantages. Advanced polarizer filter use. When you're setting up a landscape shot and you're faced with some reflections, try using the polarizer filter. The great thing about this filter is that it's variable. As you rotate the filter, it increasingly eliminates more reflections until you turn it too far and then it doesn't seem to have any effect on the images anymore. This gives you the opportunity to create varying results. Set up a scene and then place the polarizer filter on the lens and start dialing in to see what you like. Once you get the look that you want, start shooting. Before you move the tripod, try dialing in a different amount of polarization by rotating the filter just a little bit. This might reduce the reflection somewhere else in the image. Remember, it has everything to do with the angle of light that's causing those reflections. By taking multiple shots by dialing in the different amounts of polarization, you can always layer these images together in Photoshop at a later time. It'll give you the flexibility to use the best parts of the image to create your final shot. 
Now there are other programs out there that will allow you to do layer masking, but I'll show you how I use layer mask with different shots of polarized image in Photoshop. So everything begins in Lightroom. I load all my images in and you can see that I've loaded in all these different series that I took with different levels of polarization in the image. And what I'll do is I'll just color code a series. So the way you do that is right click, pull down, go to color label, and then pick a color that you like. And that way you can label your series or your sets. So it's a lot easier to work with. Also, when you're shooting, I like to take a picture of my hand in between sets simple shot of just my fingertips. And then I know that that image is the series is somewhere in between those fingertips. So for me, I just went through and kind of sorted these out a little bit and I put them into a collection. And so here's the first collection we're going to work with. This is a horizontal image where we were showing different levels of polarization. So you can see as I just run through these, there's five of them. Some are really deep polarized and some have no polarization at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take these into Photoshop and work with them in there because Photoshop has layer masks and it's a lot easier to work with. So don't be intimidated by Photoshop. This is how we do it. I'm going to take you step by step through this and I think it's a really great tool. So first determine which ones do I want? I've kind of determined that these last four are better. So I go into edit, pull down, not in Photoshop. I go down a little farther and say, open as layers in Photoshop. And what's going to happen is Photoshop is going to pull all of these images in and put them all into one file aligned on those layers, which is really cool. And again, Photoshop is, is it comes with your package. Probably if you've got Lightroom, if you've got the photographer's package from Adobe, you probably have Photoshop and you hardly ever open it due to the fact that maybe you don't know how to use it. Here's a good example of why you want to use it because you can use the layer mask and it'll give you an opportunity to mess around in Photoshop. And it really is a great tool. So I really encourage people to use this tool. Uh, Photoshop is fantastic for this kind of thing. So you can see over here in my layers palette, I've got all the four layers of my images with different polarization. They're all in different, you know, you can see it goes from, from the darkest on the bottom all the way up to the lightest on the top. And if you turn the little eyeball off, you can see in the main picture, you can see the picture below it because the eyeball basically turns off that layer. And I don't care for that layer, so I'm going to toss that. So now we've got three layers that we're working with, three different levels of polarization darkest one on the bottom, middle, then the lightest one on the top. So the eyeball allows us to turn that off and see exactly what it is we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the darkest one and drag that to the top of the layer palette. So that's my first one. And now I'm just going to simply add a layer mask. That's this little icon right down here. Click on it and it adds a layer mask and it defaults to a white layer mask. So I don't want to work with a white layer mask because that's blocking everything that I'm seeing. I want to reveal everything that's underneath. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go to fill and fill that with black. So now that layer mask is black and you can see that I can see completely through that and into the next layer down. So when I turn the eyeball off, nothing happens because it's already transparent. Now I'm going to grab my brush tool, paint with white get the brush tool. And I usually use a pretty soft, as soft as I can of a brush. And then the size will vary depending on what it is that I'm doing. So let's go on in here and we're going to paint on that layer mask. So it doesn't harm the actual image. I like this area here in that's not, that's polarized a lot more in this area with these greenery. And so I'll just paint that in. You can see over in the layer mask that I'm painting in white and that's starting to reveal uh, what we have on that layer. So now we're going to start revealing what's in that layer. You can see the difference when I turn the eyeball off and on. The other thing I like is I like the way the polarizer has worked with the greenery of the grasses and the trees. So I'm just going to paint that in as well. And you don't have to be exact because this is a blend and you can do it, you know, as close as you can. I'd like this reflection. I don't, I, I want to keep this polarized look from the reflection of these two leaves. So to me, 
these are the sections you can see in the layer mask these are the sections that i want from this file from this layer of of the extra polarized area okay so next i'm going to go in and i'm going to say okay let's so watch this if you <laughs> disable this layer mask now you can see how dark it is in the sky and it's like well you know i don't really like that darkness of a sky i want to have some I don't like it where it's just totally white, but this one where I've actually taken the polarization a little bit, so it's somewhere in between, I like that sky a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is drag that up, and now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make a layer mask, and I'm gonna fill it with black, and I'm just going to paint in that sky. So now I'm gonna paint with white, and I'm just gonna paint in the sky. And again, you don't have to be exact. You just need to be close as you're painting in the sky because it's not something where you're going to end up having real super detail in your, in your work here in Photoshop. This is just a simple layer mask that's going to reveal just that sky area. You can see over in the layer mask that uh, I've painted in white and I can reveal that part of the sky. So for me, it's like, well, this is a pretty simple process to get the different parts of a polarized image and keep the things that I like, but then also take areas that are polarized and add those to the file as well. So this is a simple process. And to me, Photoshop is great for doing this sort of thing. And it pops it all back into Lightroom so you can get on to your next thing. Another use of the polarizer filter is if you're at a zoo or something where you have a piece of glass separating you from the animal, that reflective glass might be able to be reduced by using a polarizer filter. And then it'll make it feel like you're right there and there's no glass between you. So another possible use for that polarizer filter. Another thing that we consider when we're using a polarizer filter is that we lose two stops of light. And so you can kind of use it as a light ND filter. So if you needed to get that lower shutter speed, say like when you're photographing waterfalls or something, you want a lower shutter speed, that's a way you can do it by just putting on the polarizer filter and you don't have to carry around a bunch of ND filters. It might work for you. Those are some examples of how to work with a circular polarizer filter and why you need to get one in your gear bag as soon as you can. I get people asking me all the time, what's a good gift for a photographer on their shopping list? And I always say, start with a polarizing filter. It's fairly inexpensive and you can get some dramatic results. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Terry Vanderheide.